Good morning, guys. I just pulled up to Lily's pediatrician's office. She has her three month checkup today. As you can hear, she is not thrilled about being in the car. We just had to go ahead and drop the boys off at school and then swing around to her pediatrician's office. So she's been in the car for quite some time and she is not thrilled about it. So I'm going to go ahead and take her out and we're gonna head into her appointment. Lily girl, where's your binky? This? There you go. Get your little blanket. I know, Sissy. Alrighty guys, we are home from the pediatrician. Little Lily's on her little piano play mat over there. She was like dozing in and out of sleep at the pediatrician's office and then also slept on the car ride home. Normally she would be napping on me from like 10 to 12 and right now it's almost I think 11. So she, I tried to get her to fall back asleep on me when we got home and she just doesn't seem that tired. She was talking to herself on me and trying to get me to laugh with her. So I figured I would let her lay on her little mat and play for a little bit and I would update you guys on how her three month checkup went. And then at some point later on today or tomorrow or before I go ahead and post this video, I do want to sit down with you guys and share with you how nap training has gone and what I did and show you guys kind of like the full two week outline because I did track every single one of her naps that I attempted in her room for a two week period. So that will be in this video as well. But while she's content, before I go ahead and eat lunch, I'm gonna quickly update you guys on how she's doing. She is quite the big chunky girl. She is 14 pounds and 10 ounces. At three months old, I think the boys were like 10-ish pounds. I need to go back and look, but Lily girl is a chunky girl. We were just at the pediatrician's office about a week and a half ago because she was sick and she was 13 pounds, 13 ounces then. So in just like two weeks time, she gained almost a whole pound, which is pretty good. Her growth curve is looking amazing. Her height, I believe she's like 25 and a half inches, I think they said. She was 24 and a half inches, I think, at her last appointment. So she's grown an inch over the last month. So she is growing and thriving. Now I did mention, I think in my last video, that I went to the GI with her for her reflux. We originally went to the ENT for what I thought was laryngomalacia and he told me that she does not have that but she does have silent reflux and referred us to a GI and we had that appointment last week and they did put her on medication. They put her on Prevacid twice a day in the morning and at night about 30 minutes before those feedings and we're on day three of that and so far I haven't seen too much of a difference in her like demeanor or anything like that. The GI did tell me it could take probably about a week for it to really start working and for me to see a difference with her. It's not really going to decrease the amount of spit ups, but more the symptoms that come with that, her like uncomfortability and all that kind of stuff. So we did go ahead and start her on that. As for her eating, I feel like she's still not drinking that much. She's taking Anywhere between four and six ounces, she is taking six ounces in the morning and I'm attempting six ounces before bed, but she usually only has like four or five ounces of that. And then throughout the day, she's only taking four ounces. I feel like at this point with the boys, they were taking consistently like four to five ounces. I feel like she should be taking more, but I think her silent reflux has a lot to do with her feeding still, she will drink really well for the first like five minutes of a feeding, the first like two to three ounces. And then anything after that, she kind of gets fussy at the bottle and the GI thinks that it has to do with her silent reflux as well. And just like her symptoms, like after her first burp, 
sometimes she'll spit up and then maybe she's getting uncomfortable not wanting to finish the feed so she her feedings are still a little bit all over the place i'm hoping as she takes the prevacid and like i said it really kicks in for her um we see some change with her feedings the pediatrician also said that i'm kind of feeding her too frequently she eats about every two and a half hours during the day um usually about five feedings she will kind of consistently wake up one time in the middle of the night last night she actually slept through the night so most days are around six feedings but during the day she feeds every two and a half hours so she said four ounces every two and a half hours she's getting the calories she needs she's clearly growing and thriving but to try and space those feedings out to every three to four hours and see if she'll increase her volume then um so feeding she's doing great hopefully we'll get cleared to start solids within the next month or two she said she said she has really good head control and that's something that they look for when um clearing you to start solids obviously it's like age and then if she's developmentally ready for that and so they the pediatrician thinks that within the next month or two she should be able to start those and then with starting solids and like cereals and things like that a lot of the time babies with reflux the reflux does improve a lot because there's more in their bellies than just liquids that can come up easily there'll be more substance in her belly and so with the prevacid and trying to space out feedings and starting salads in the next month or two we should really see an improvement overall with her but even with her salmon reflux i feel like over the last month she is a very happy baby she's not arching her back or being as uncomfortable during feedings as she was in the beginning so i think just developmentally she's also kind of outgrowing the reflux to a degree so i'm feeling really good at where she's at i mean clearly she's growing and thriving being over 14 pounds now she is a big chunky girl so i don't have to worry about her spinning up too much and losing too much weight or just not wanting to eat fussing too much at the bottle and not eating she's clearly getting calories and she's clearly growing so that makes me feel really good. And then, like I said, over the next month or two with starting solids, we should see even more of an improvement with her. She's getting a little fussy back there. I think she is tired. She's just fighting it. So I am going to have to nap her here in a few minutes. But um, as for sleep, she is, her wake windows are about an hour and a half. I'm trying to stretch them out and push them to an hour and a half. But I found that when we do hour and a half wake windows, she does go down really easily. On the weekend, she's doing her first nap of the day in her room, and she was doing that up until this last week when the boys started school. Now with them in school, her schedule's gotten a little bit um, hairy because she her first nap is when we have to leave to take the boys to school. So she is taking that first nap of the day in the car, but on the weekend, she's taking it in her room. And then her next two naps of the day are on me. Her fourth nap of the day is um no her next nap of the day is on me her third nap of the day is in the car on the way to get the boys and then her fourth nap of the day is in her room again so she's taking her first and last nap of the day in her room on the weekends and then her last nap of the day in her room on weekdays if that makes sense i am trying to consistently keep at least one to two naps a day in her room so that she is still practicing falling asleep independently which like i said i will go into more detail about that in later on in the video um but she is doing really well with that i just find that her naps are still short when she's sleeping on her own which is developmentally appropriate but i do like to have her nap on me in between those naps to make sure she's not getting overtired she's getting a little fussy so she will come sit with me but um yeah overall i mean i think four naps a day is still developmentally appropriate at this point in time sometimes it's five naps a day if her naps get a little bit hairy but it's mainly four naps a day um hour and a half wake windows in between oh don't do speed naps independent naps are usually 30 40 minutes contact naps are obviously a lot longer usually an hour and a half to two hours but I've kind of accepted the contact nap lifestyle and I feel fine like when I get home from dropping the boys off at school, she will eat and then she'll take a two hour contact nap on me. And it's just like our us time together and I've fully accepted it and embraced the contact nap lifestyle. But we are still working on getting her to sleep independently. Bedtime, I'm still holding her until she's in a deep sleep and putting her in her bassinet. I know within the next month, the four month sleep regression is going to hit. And when that does, we're going to have to adjust 
bedtime with her and she will need to start learning how to go to sleep independently at night because with the four month sleep regression, however they are put to sleep, typically when they wake up is how they want to be put back to sleep and I can't be holding her all night long. So when that does hit, we will adjust her bedtime routine and she will start to be put into bed. Um, drowsy but awake and put herself to sleep independently but again I kind of embrace like holding her to sleep at night and it's our little us time together so sleep is going really well feedings are going decent I feel like she will improve over the next month developmentally she is so chatty she has found her voice she has started giggling she loves to babble um, still no rolling over yet. I don't remember. I know the boys were very delayed with their rolling over. I think they didn't roll over until like six months old. She's not quite there yet, but the pediatrician says she's really not that concerned with that. She has good head control. She loves to sit up assisted. She loves her tummy time. She loves just like floor play in general where she can kind of move around freely. Um, I'm trying to think what else was on the little developmental questionnaire that we did today. But overall, she says that she's thriving and developing as a three-month-old baby should be. Um, I'm trying to think what else do I normally update you guys on. She is in six-month, three to six-month clothing, mainly six-month clothing. These little leggings are six-month, and I feel like a lot of her six-month pajamas are already getting tight on her. Like I said, she is a chunky girl. And she's wearing clothes that the boys wore at like five or six months old. She's wearing them now at three months old. She's 14 weeks, so she's a little bit older than three months. Um, she's wearing clothes that they wore at like five, six months and filling them out really well. She is a chunky girl, like I said. So I need to go to the boys' clothing again and pull out even bigger pieces for her, which is just crazy that she is almost growing out of six month clothes at three almost four months old but this sweatshirt was actually the boys and i think they wore this at like four months old right are you wearing your brother's sweatshirt and i feel like it looks a little tiny on her but i'm trying to think what else i think that's basically it there weren't really any concerns for me to bring up to the pediatrician today at her appointment she got no shots today she said next time we will discuss the RSV vaccine, which is something that I really want to give her because Ben had RSV this time last year. He got it in October and he got really sick with that and that was very scary. We never faced RSV or anything when the boys were younger because it was COVID and everything was on lockdown. So like, I feel like the boys never got sick when they were little. But Lily, she was sick this past week and it really affected her breathing and she really struggled with it. And so I definitely want to give her the RSV vaccine next month. Um, just to give her a fighting chance if she does get RSV, help her be able to fight that better or just help prevent it altogether because I could not imagine being in the hospital like I was with Ben. Ben was almost four at that point. I could not imagine going through all of that with a baby this small. Like it was scary enough dealing with an almost four year old having RSV. I could not imagine having an infant with RSV. So that is something she said that she can get next month, but she had no vaccines today. So she's a happy girl. She did not have to get any shots today. And overall, it was a really good appointment. I feel really good at where she's at with her development and where she is as a baby. She's so happy. She's thriving even with her silent reflux. Like I said, I feel like it's just improving overall with time. And this is a really fun age. I feel like six months is my favorite age, but with her being like more lively and awake now and finding her voice and babbling and laughing, she's a really fun baby right now. So that's a little update on her three month appointment. I'm starving. I'm going to try and eat something before she wants to take a nap again. She typically eats again around like 12, 12 30. And like I said, it's probably like 11 o'clock now. So I am going to try and eat something myself, get her to nap until like 12, 12 30, and then I'll go ahead and feed her again. And then we'll have to leave and get the boys. And then at some point later on today or tomorrow, I will sit down with you guys and share with you guys like an update on nap training, explain like what I did and how it went and everything like that. Because when I did mention in I think her two month appointment checkup video where I said I wanted to start nap training her, um, I posted kind of like the plan that I was going to do and I said I would update you guys on it. So I figured why not update you guys on it a month later in our three month appointment. So I'll be back in a little bit to talk about nap training. All right guys, it is now two days later and I'm finally getting around to filming the nap training update portion of this video. 
I'm going to do so while Lily slowly wakes up from her nap inside. I'm also going to make myself some hard-boiled eggs so I can make some egg salad for lunch when she's done eating. But I never wound up updating you guys yesterday because we got unexpected news that there was going to be a showing in our house. Um, the realtor or broker or whatever she's called has been doing open houses on the weekends and then kind of here or there throughout the week if she gets like an appointment or interest she'll usually give us like 24 hours notice. So on Monday night which was the day I started this vlog she texted me saying that she was going to need the house empty for a few hours yesterday which was Tuesday. So I basically spent the entire day at Harris's parents' house because, like I mentioned, the boys' school is closer to Harris's parents' house, so it just didn't make sense for me to drop him off at school, have to come back here to feed her, to then go back to his parents' house, to then maybe come back here again, and then just have to leave to go pick the boys up from school. So I just spent the entire day at Harris's parents' house so that the house was empty and they were able to do their showings and it was just like less chaotic for me so I never got around to filming this yesterday so while I go ahead and boil some eggs I'm also going to make Lily's bottle in a second I wanted to update you guys on nap training I was also going to share with you guys like the nap training process yesterday however she fought that nap so hard so I'm kind of glad I didn't share it but if you guys remember in my two month update video, I posted a screenshot of this nap training method that I found over on Reddit. It is claiming to be a gentle method. However, there is some crying involved. I will link it down below for you guys to read that thread if you are interested in trying it and you guys can actually read the whole training method. But it basically calls for you to put the baby in their room, a dark space, a safe sleep space, their bassinet, their crib. Um, put them in there and for 15 minutes you do not enter the room and they should settle within that 15 minute period of time. I did go ahead and log every single nap that I did like this for the first two weeks of us doing the nap training. So I will throw some screenshots up here on the screen for you guys to see but I did this to kind of find a trend in Lily and see kind of what was going to work for her. Since starting this whole nap training thing I have lengthened her wake windows but I did find when we started this, I think she was maybe like 10 weeks old when we started this. An hour and 15 to an hour and 20 minutes was the perfect wake window for her. And I always started with the first nap of the day just because their sleep drive is the highest during that time. And they always recommend to start nap training with the first nap of the day. So about an hour and 15 to an hour and 20 minutes after she woke up in the morning, I would go in her room and do a very simple nap routine, which for me, it was basically swaddling her closing the blinds, turning the sound machine on, patting her for just a few minutes in my arms, telling her it's nap time, I'm going to put you down, you're going to take a nap. I would give her her binky and put her down. I was so surprised. I think the first day she fell asleep in like 11 minutes. And for me, I kind of tweaked it a little bit just knowing Lily's temperament. I was nervous to leave her in there to cry the full 15 minutes because at that point in time I still thought she had low wrinkle malacia and I didn't know how that was going to affect her going down to sleep if she was going to go into like an all-out full-on crying jag and then having some like gasping or strider episodes with that. So I did tweak it a little bit and I think like after five minutes of her being put down if she was still fussing, I would go in and pop her binky in. And then a lot of the times that I did that, she would fall asleep within like one to two minutes of me doing that. So you'll see throughout my log, I logged like how many minutes after I put her down, if I went and gave her her binky. Sometimes I would go in and do it once. Sometimes I would have to do it twice. But I did find with that first nap of the day, within that 15 minute time frame, she would always fall asleep. I think I had to maybe rescue one of the naps. The first week of doing it, I did rescue any naps. If I felt like it was on the shorter side, I would just sit in her rocker in her dark space with the sound machine on and try and lengthen the nap. But since then, I haven't really been doing that. Um, but the first nap of the day has been the most successful. I have been trying to also have her nap in her room for her last nap of the day because that nap is usually at the time where I'm either having to cook dinner or feed the boys and eat dinner myself. And it's kind of nice not having to hold her and juggle that nap with cooking and feeding. However, throughout the day, baby sleep, sleep drives do change and later on naps are usually more difficult than the first few naps of the day. Um, later naps in the day are usually the first naps to be dropped anyway. So 
it's kind of all over the place with her last nap of the day but her first nap like she took her nap in her room this morning because she did wake up on the earlier side she has been sleeping through the last three days but she does wake up at like 6 a.m on the dot so if that is the case she does go down for a nap in her room before we head out for school drop off she went down for that so easy i think we've had only like one or two days where she hasn't cried at all but the first nap of the day it's maybe like two or three minutes of wincing now and she'll go down However, if I try that last nap of the day, a lot of the times she will cry for that full like 15 minutes. And then yesterday I did have to go in and just wind up holding her because she wasn't settling and wasn't going down. But I do also think right now we're at the case, like the cases where I'm trying to adjust her wake windows. And with that, I don't know if I'm pushing it too long sometimes and then sometimes it not being long enough. I really need to kind of tweak her afternoon wake windows. And hopefully in doing that, her last nap of the day will also adjusts and she'll take that in her room but for lily always contact napping for the first like 10 weeks of her life i was super shocked going into this that she even went down for one nap and at this point we've been doing this for almost four weeks now and like i said i can 99.9 .9 percent of the time get her to nap her first nap of the day in her room so to me that's a win the naps are super short like i mentioned they're like 30 or 40 minutes which naps naturally lengthen when they learn how to connect sleep cycles usually around like five or six months so i know right now it's developmentally appropriate for her to have short naps she's officially waking up let me go grab her but yeah i highly recommend if you are looking for a super simple nap training method that's really lined out for you perfectly to try the one that i did and like i said for lily's temperament and for her never being able to fall asleep independently i was super shocked to even see this work a little bit i will say like i said it is outlined as a gentle sleep training method but there is some crying involved you can obviously tweak it to what you're comfortable with like for me i go in usually at like the five or ten minute mark and give her her binky to try and diminish her level of crying but there is some crying or fussing involved with this so if that's something you're not comfortable with probably skip this method but i do think it's going pretty well for her temperament how she is as a baby and where she is developmentally because like i said her naps are short but developmentally that is appropriate for this point in time and i know her naps will lengthen and consolidate as she drops naps and as she grows and develops a little bit more so that's a little nap training update like i said i'll leave it linked down below if you guys are looking for a nap training method to try with your little one and i think i'm going to go ahead and close out today's video i hope you guys enjoyed hearing a little update on lily getting to see lily she is so much more lively and more awake these last few weeks she's actually starting to giggle and laugh a little bit which is super fun so yeah that's a little update i'm going to go finish boiling my eggs and get little lily a bottle and feed her and with that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video, which I think I'm going to do a daily vlog and share some more packing with you guys because we are getting down to the wire here with Harris wanting to be out in like two and a half weeks and I have a lot of packing to get done. So let me know if you guys will be interested in that kind of video because I think that's going to be my next one. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.